Welcome to step five of awareness. And this part is about what pisses you off. Very important for self-development and heightening your awareness because what pisses you off or when people in self-development world say triggered you Oh, that's triggered you. Reveals so much about your shadow side. The parts of you that are shut down or the unhealed parts of you. So, spiritually speaking, um, if negative energy, we call it heavy energy, if heaviness attaches to you, it can only attach to the unhealed part of you. So therefore, it's yours. And it's calling something out of you that needs to be worked on, that needs to be looked at, that needs to be addressed. Um, I'm certainly about taking responsibility, not about the blame game. And uh, I guess people using negative energy, entities, attachments, almost as an excuse for their own stuff. And to go, it's, yeah, it's, it's another layer of, well, I've run out of people to blame. So I'm just going to blame, blame formless. Blame the formless. I'll blame energy. Oh, it's because the negative energy I, I, I must have had been riddled, riddled with a negative entity. That's why I did such and such. Oh, it wasn't me. It was a negative entity. I think, why on earth can't we take responsibility for everything that we do? And for that to be acceptable, accepted by us and others. And it's often that we, we try and hide it because we've assumed one of the assumed is one of the Toltec um, teachings and um, the Toltec wisdom tells tells us don't don't assume never assume because we'll assume other people aren't going to accept those parts of us because we perhaps necessarily don't like them or they're not aligned with who we think we want to be. All these mad things that we make up in the mind. And your real authentic self is it's like we're half assing life, I guess, because we're happy to be whatever we're happy to be. And then there's another half of us that we go, oh no, I'm not happy to own up to that. No, no, I don't have those parts in me. But from my perspective, we, we are all responsible for each other, actually. And collectively, we're responsible for everything. So, you know, we're all human. We're all attached to the same consciousness. We all should be functioning together as a team rather than he did that, no, you're responsible, no, well, he was in charge, I didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, it was because of negativity, it's because of this, it's because of that. We're so quick to point blame outside of ourselves and to other people and organisations and X, Y, Z and, oh, it's all the nastiness, what, you know, why the world is is in the state that it's in. And I think we would do a much quicker job at turning it around if everyone took responsibility for what was happening. And I don't mean that like all the lovely sensitive people going, oh my God, I'm so, so responsible for all the construction, all the destruction, whoa, what am I going to do? Oh, I must be a horrible person. It's not to berate yourself at all and put yourself down. I mean take responsibility in an active sense to go, well, if I've 
been involved in the group that's had something to do with this, then I'm sure going to be involved in putting it right again. And I can do something about this. That's what I mean by active responsibility. It's that willingness and that need to go, yeah, yeah, I had something to do with this. Therefore, I can, I can have my hand in putting it right again. And I'm really happy and willing to do that rather than not taking responsibility and going, it's nothing to do with me. I'm, I didn't go anywhere near the rainforest or but I didn't put any plastic in the thing. No, oh, no, I, I do my recycling and no, nope, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. Or whatever the state the world is going in. Not responsibility so that we can feel awful. And just want to climb into bed and go, well, I don't know what to do. Just shut the doors and just tell me off. And then, because that's, that's no good, isn't it? That's a bit useless if you go into victim destructive mode. Um, you're no good to anyone or helping. Um, but an interesting catch if you notice that that's your tendency. And all of this is just heightening the awareness to your behaviours, your patterns, how you react to whatever I'm saying, how you react to things that happen in the world, how you, how you react and be with everything. I mean, it's, it's your life. It's how you relate and show up in the world surely is the most important thing to you because it's, it's who you be. And with the awareness becomes choice. Once you're aware of who you are and the choices that you've made in the past, you can then go, well, now I've got so much more choice because I can see here and here and here and here and now I can choose to design the life that I like. So heightening the awareness will give you the ability to design and create your life. And that brings me on to the second illusion. We are creative beings that function inside out. The outside in is the illusion. That's when people, when we're stuck in the blame paradigm, when you're so used to saying, it's that person's fault, it's that thing, it's him over there, it's because I was in this situation, it's because of that job, it was because of this, and everything outside of you is the problem. And it's blamed for affecting your internal state. I feel crap because all of this is the problem. And the key to the awareness and the self-development is going, oh, hold on, that's backwards. Nobody can make me feel anything because I'm in control of what's going on inside and actually what's going on inside is creating my outward reality. Our subconscious minds is the computer program that's creating this film, this movie, this life experience, our, the energy of us is creating our experience. We are creators of our experience. And that's a very new way of looking at things. We're so used to saying, no, 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 it's this relationship has affected me and they did that to me and my mum made me feel small and it's my dad's condition that's done this to me. You can use all of those as self-awareness, fact, not facts, self-awareness pieces and go, wow, that's how my dad brought me up, and that's how my mum's brought me up, and this is how society runs, this is that archetype, that's that archetype, and all these people behave like this, cool, very interesting, but that doesn't define me. It's all pieces of awareness to my awareness puzzle that I can use to my advantage because I live 
inside out. I hope I'm describing this well enough. And that's why they say go within or go without. And by within, really, it again, that's a word. <laughs> Within, I don't mean like literally you've got to find it inside you, even though I'm saying within and I'm touching myself, because I mean me being aware of me, of how I exist, of my own thoughts, beliefs, patterns, programs, and of my own spiritual essence, my connection to my soul purpose, my connection with energy, um, all the, all the psychic work that I do, all my inner work, all of my knowledge, those are all the parts that I associate with me and, and uh, that I've learnt through going in. Um, but by going in, I don't literally mean close your eyes and start trying to search inside your body. Um, it's just a word to describe being self-aware going inward, expanding the knowledge of who you, who you are. And growing that capacity. Saying, well, that's the edge of my comfort zone. Can I go past that? This scares me, but I know my thoughts and my fears are blocking me. Can I move past that? This is my edge here. This is my tendency here. Once we know all those things, we can then choose and say, okay, I'm going to choose to take this step through fear today. And I'm going to choose, well, I habitually do this all the time and I think it's made me stuck. So I'm going to do the opposite of that and I'm just going to try this. And that's going to open up my awareness to a whole new shift of being. And then we're not on autopilot anymore and we start to go within and really assess ourselves and go, whoa, this is awesome because with awareness comes choice. And then you can choose to be whatever you want that serves you in that now moment. You don't have to choose to be something in the morning and have to wear that all day like an outfit because you can't go home to change your clothes. The beauty of self-awareness is you can change in any now moment and you can pivot. That's that's the beauty because if you make a choice, you get so far down that choice and you go, actually this, this feels a bit icky now. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to make a new choice because you know yourself so well, you can pivot in each moment. Making choices, going, oh, this is, this is how I want to dance with life. <clears throat> so finding your shadow is extremely revealing to all of you. And it will expand your boundaries. Expand who you think you thought you were. And how do you reveal your shadow? Things that piss you off, things that trigger you, things that annoy you, things that you go, oh, why do I keep thinking about that? Or um, catch yourself if you're saying anything, passing around any gossip about somebody that you don't like them because of the, what they've done, X, Y, Z. Um, Please catch that. That is a form of black magic that that, that goes around in the, in the heavy subconscious far too much. And I think it's very important that to catch that um, if you're going to do any sort of energy work. I know I work as a shamaness, so I've got to be so on point with my awareness and my thought capability. Um, because if you're sending somebody bad thoughts... Um, because they've triggered you, one form of black magic, if you're passing around gossip and talking badly about that person in a group of people and uh, earwigging everyone else and affecting everyone else's opinion of that person, that's another form of black magic. And all it is, is instead go, wow, why do I want to say this about this person? Why has that 
thing that they've done really pissed me off. And the key is to, once you've found what really pisses you off, you can probably do an exercise. Write down three to five, depending on how many you've got. Definitely do three, go up to five if you can. People in your life that you, let's use a slang word, have got beef with right now. So it might be, or people that you just, you've got a little tension with. It doesn't have to be full blown argument. Oh, we're in a, a big thing. It can just be, you know, I prefer not to spend time with that person because they do piss me off a little bit. Just something as subtle as that. Might be a boss that you work with. It parents is always comes up your mum or your dad because they've treated you like this 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 and they always look for the always and the nevers if you say my mum always does this and she never does that that's when you know you've got a beef with somebody because you're using the always and the nevers and that's those are the people that go on your list five people that really you've got some some friction and some tension with and then find out what it is about them that most pisses you off or puts you into a rage and be like oh yeah it's just this thing about them it's just so right <laughs> get in touch with that and then give them a piece of advice imagine that they're there with you and you're trying to explain to them and you just go Look, this is the thing, and you do this, and it really, God, just grinds my stuff. And, you know, if I could give you one piece of advice, this would be it. Blech. And give them some advice that would help, um, you know, what they're doing, in your opinion, that's wrong, or nasty, or bad, or whatever it is that annoys you. Give them some advice to help them over that, or help them through it, or help them whatever. Um... So write the person, you can write the thing that pisses you off if you like, and then write the advice that you'd give to that person. So five people with the thing and then the advice. And you know what? I shouldn't really tell you the last piece until you've done that exercise. <laughs> so press stop on this video now. Do it, otherwise you'll ruin this exercise. Do it, otherwise you'll ruin the practice. Okay, must press stop on this video right now. Then do your five things, do the exercise now, and then come back to the end. Okay, <laughs> press stop to have your commitment. Yes, go, stop. Boop. Welcome back. And hopefully now you've pressed play again, but you've now got your five people, five things that piss you off, and the advice that you'd give all those people. So, here's the exciting bit. If you haven't pressed stop yet, and been cheeky, please press stop now, because I'm about to reveal the end of the exercise. And the exercise won't work as effectively if you know, although it still will work, because I still know the exercise and I do still do it. And it still works really well. So you can still do this even after you know the secret. It's just more exciting if you don't know the end. It's like Christmas and opening your presents early. Now what you do is you read the advice and take it on board yourself. You read that statement of advice and you go, and as if it's for you. And you look at it and you go, like you would say, oh, if they could just only just listen. Right, what you need to do is listen. And then ask yourself, where in my life am I not listening? A part of me is telling me to my face, you don't listen, where do you need to listen? Because you ain't listening. If it's triggering you in somebody else, it's a shadow part of you that you need to address. So you can go, oh. And normally everyone goes, oh yeah, 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 that's totally, yes. 
okay i get it um and if you don't and you've got to search a little deeper then yeah do do the work this works without fail and if you go i don't need that advice mm. for the purpose of i mean i don't care but for the purpose of yeah self-love raising your consciousness showing up being a better you owning all the parts of you and being fully in awe and in love and acceptance of yourself then do take the advice on find somewhere in your life where it does need to be applied because there will be somewhere I guarantee you And usually that's because you could get a room full of people and your sheet of paper with the five bits of advice you've got on there, read it to the room, and the majority of the room would go, yeah, I need to I need to apply that, I need to do that one. For some part of my life I need to do that one. But especially what's brilliant about this is because those are triggers for you, this list will be specifically catered to the shadow side in you. And that will always be the case. If somebody has pissed you off, you get to go, oh, yes, right, which shadow part of me that I've hidden is this speaking to? And quite a lot of the time, people get in confrontation that are um, doing the same work or are very similar, um, you know, in, in the same line of work because there's a level of the judge archetype, which is competition. You've judged that person because you're competing with them. And competition is another word for I've judged that person because I, I've judged their efforts because I'm competing with their efforts. So if anyone else you're finding yourself competitive with, um, have they pissed you off? Or is it is it a creative kind of feeding off of each other? It can be quite a creative energy, envy. Because you're like, oh, I envy what they've got, so I'm going to work a little bit harder here, and then I'm going to tweak this, I'm going to do that. And you're almost like spurring each other on with this quite playful, creative energy. But you've got to be careful that this isn't wanting to put them down, wanting them to fail, wanting to send them any kind of negative thinking. You've got to praise them for being your catalyst for motivation and saying thank you. Thank you for being so good at that because you're spurring me on. I love that. And, and addressing the part of you that wants to be annoyed. Or, yeah, get stressy about it. And that's how you find the lightness and the space and the shift in perspective is you need to a, a, address the bit that's hidden first. Then you can go, ha, ah, see you. And you're welcome. You're okay. You know. I welcome the part of me that doesn't listen. It's okay. It's not going, oh, I never listen. Oh, what do I do? Get rid of it? Um, it's, no, that nobody's perfect. And I'm so proud of myself for seeing that bit that was hidden. And I'm, I'm sorry for ignoring you. And yeah, you're welcome because nobody's perfect. And I accept myself anyway. And you doing this shadow work with love and with acceptance and going because everybody is just like me and you do shadow work in a group and you go wow it's so refreshing to see all the imperfect parts of everyone and just go yeah none of us are perfect everyone gets loads of stuff wrong we've all got parts of ourselves that we would prefer hidden away that we aren't very proud of that we feel like we've buggered up or whatever and this is a wonderful way to release any guilt, shame, and yeah, and start the forgiveness. And it's such a beautiful, neat, telltale tool um, that stops you blaming other people and gets you away from, well, it must be them, and it must be them, and it must be them. So I just need to change my job, and then I won't be around those people, and I'll be fine. Rather than going, wow, thank you for addressing this part of me. Thank you for addressing this part of me. Thank you for addressing this part of me. I take out all those golden nuggets. 
flip it around. Yeah, and, and up level and up spiral. And take that's taking radical responsibility for your own life and your own self-development and that is really empowering. Then you can't be worried or fearful about anything again because you're like, I learn from it. It's it's a tool, it's beautiful. Let's let's see and figure out who I am by conversing and having relationships with all these different people. So I hope that was explained well enough. And enjoy meeting your shadow parts. Good picture.